Okay. Today we're going to start looking at uh, jQuery. jQuery is basically uh, just some JavaScript that's been created for you to use. Uh, it's free and open source. It um, just makes certain things in JavaScript easier so you don't have to write out code yourself. Some people like it, some people don't like it, but it's fairly commonly used and it's fairly simple to use. Um, from what I've read, uh, Google uses it on their websites, IBM, Netflix. Uh, it's, it's used uh, in a lot of places. Um, and uh, before you start watching these tutorials, I suggest that you know basic HTML, some CSS, and the basic concepts of how JavaScript works. And I have done a few tutorials a long time ago on JavaScript, um, but just at least know the basics. And uh, then we'll start looking at uh, jQuery here. Um, so I've already created a very basic, uh, you know, starter file here. Uh, let me go into it in Vim, but of course use whatever text editor you prefer. And it's just the, the basic tags, uh, the HTML header and body tags uh, for HTML. And I've opened up the file here on, uh, in uh, Google Chrome. And this is just running off my local computer. I don't have it running on a web server. Uh, JavaScript is uh, client side, so you don't need a web server to run it on your local machine. Obviously, if you're going to want to share it, you'll put it up on a website. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go into my body tags and I'll create um, a couple of paragraph tags here. And I'll write this is line one. And we'll write this is line two. And we'll write, you guessed it, this is line three. Okay. So now that we have that, I'll quickly save it and then refresh my uh, web browser over here. And you can see the three lines. Right now they don't do anything. They're just paragraph lines. But now we're going to start working on the jQuery part of it. And so let's go up here into our header and let's create our script tag. So I'm going to type in script. And then I'm going to close that script tag. And. Uh, we also need to download jQuery. As I said, it's a package of uh, pre-arranged uh, JavaScript for you. Uh, and we're just going to go here and we're going to search jQuery, spell it properly. And uh, right here we have jQuery download. We'll click there. And right here there is uh, jQuery. And if we click on that, it actually my browser tries to open it. I'm just going to copy the um, uh, the URL here. I'm going to type wget and just download that file. Uh, and this I'm going to be using version jQuery 1.8.3. So it's saved to a file called jQuery 1.8.3. Uh, mini. There is a a uh, min version and a full version. Uh, right now, I'm just going to use this min version. And um, so I'm going to go back into my HTML here. And in the these script tags we've created, I'm going to say the source equals. And then I'm going to put in the name of that file, because I have it in the same folder as my HTML document. So that will import uh, all the parts of this, H, uh, of this JavaScript, the jQuery. And now we can create our own script tags and call functions from it. So let me space this out so we can read it better. So in here, this is where we put our own little tags or JavaScript commands. Um, so now we can start calling elements. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, normally you can go, you know, document dot get, get element by ID or by tag or by name and then give it the name and then tell it we want to change. jQuery helps shorten that up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do though is before you actually run any of your jQuery, you may want to wait and make sure that the document is fully loaded before it starts running stuff. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say dollar sign and then we're going to give it some parentheses and in here we're going to say document. So that is saying uh, look at our document element and then we're going to say ready. So when it's ready, what are we going to do? We're going to 
uh, run a function. So inside parentheses here, we're going to say function parentheses braces. I'll come down here, braces, and then I'll close my parentheses and uh, a semicolon there. In fact, I'm going to indent that. So now, when the document's loaded, what are we going to do? Well, here we're going to basically look at any tag that is a paragraph tag is what we're going to say. So just like before, we're going to say dollar sign and parentheses, and then inside quotations, we're going to put a P. So this is saying anything that has the tag P, which is our paragraph tag, but you can use any tag here, saying look at all elements, every element that is a paragraph tag, and we're going to say when you click it, we are going to run another function. So we're going to create a function in here. And we're going to say, I, I like to close everything right away before I forget. Okay, so whenever you click any of the paragraph tags, so any of these texts, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to say dollar sign parentheses P. And then we're going to say dot hide. And you guessed it. What it's going to do is it's going to hide everything that has a tag of P, anything that is a paragraph tag. So let me quickly save this. We'll refresh over here. Nothing changes visually at this point, but when I click on any of these lines, nothing happens. I must have typed something wrong. Let's have a quick look here. Uh, we have our scripts, we have our tags, document, ready, function, uh, dot click, and hide. Everything looks right. What did I miss? I did refresh this, right? I, I saved this. I refreshed this. And we clicked. Okay. I realized what I did wrong here. I put up here for our source, I put SCR instead of SRC. That's actually a common typo for me. So now that we have that and I saved it, we'll refresh over here. Now if I click on any of these lines, because they are paragraph tags, they all disappear because we're saying here, when you click on any of the paragraph tags, find all the paragraph tags and hide them. Okay, so let's say you don't want to hide them all. You just want to hide the one you clicked on. Well, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you can always pass the this tag or this variable. I'm not look, I'm looking for the right word here. Anyway, if you change that instead of a string of p looking for a tag, it's going to pass it whatever item was clicked on, whatever element was clicked on. So now I save that, and now instead of hiding them all, when I click on one, it hides the one that I click on. So let's just quickly review here. This is our our body down here. This is what we're viewing, and all we're saying is print these lines on the screen, each as their own little paragraph because we're giving it the paragraph tag. But once again, it doesn't matter what tag it is, because we tell it right here what tag we're looking for. So it can be uh, any tag. And we're saying, now up in our script, we're going to say, so normally you would put down here in the tag on click. But up here instead with the, with the uh, jQuery, we're saying anytime the document is ready, th then run this function. And this function says, if any p tag is clicked on, then run this function. What does this function say? Well, find this, which is the element that's clicked on, and hide it. So that's our first little JavaScript tutorial. Uh, besides my little typo up here in the middle that kind of uh, threw me off for a second there, um, that's our first tutorial. You can now hide things, uh, whether groups of things or individual things, when you click on them. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be doing this series all this uh, next week or two on jQuery. Hope you're enjoying this, and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. Uh, if you're interested in jQuery and other web development stuff, because I've been getting into it myself a lot lately, um, yeah, you know, be sure to like this video so I know that you like it, and uh, I'll be doing more videos on topics like this. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.